Hey, good morning everybody. Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. Today is Saturday, October 3rd, 2020. Hey, if you trade Tesla or you want to trade Tesla, you like trading Tesla options, today I'm going to show you how we took Tesla and traded a successful put option credit spread for a 295% annualized return. So if you like trading Tesla, stick around for that. We will show you how we did it. Welcome to another edition of the Saturday Synopsis. We like to look at the charts, see what happened over last week's trading, and see what may happen going forward. So let's jump right in. We always take a look at the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the SP 500, it gives us a broad overview over the whole market. So here's our charts. Each one of these bars is one day's worth of trading. And at has that we've been talking about last week, this is where we ended up last week below the 50 day and the 20 day moving average. We always talk about the charts in relation to the moving averages. And this is the 200 day, the Mac daddy, the big daddy of moving averages. 200 day down here, red line 50 day, blue line 20 day. The market had made all time new highs a few weeks ago, blasted down through the 20 day, blasted down through the 50, 50 day. I talked about after a big move like that, the market has to digest that move. They have to, it has to figure out where it wants to go. So at the end of last week, Friday was here, this move, this day right here. I thought the market would open up this past week, some sideways action, hopefully moving higher. This week on Monday, we actually gapped open higher. Here, right here, these two days, Monday, Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, it was able to get up through both the 50-day and the 20-day. So that was an excellent bullish move. Thursday, continued that move above the moving averages. And then on Friday, of course, we got hit yesterday, Friday, October 2nd, with the news that U.S. President Donald Trump came down with the coronavirus. So that took uh, down the market a little bit. We have to see how that plays out for next week. Um, if, if everything turns out okay for the president, then I have to believe the market will continue on its upward trajectory. If things take a turn for the worse with President Trump, then we'll probably have some more downside to go. So it's definitely going to be news driven over the next week. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ, see what that did. NASDAQ is the one leading, has been leading the move. All the big name players. NASDAQ, same thing, had the all-time highs here a few weeks ago. Big move down, came down through the 20 day, came down through the 50 day, just like the S&P 500. This was all of last week's trading right down here. And we open up this week above the 50 day, stayed above the 50 day. And then just yesterday with the news of President Trump came back down on the 50 day. Let's take a look. Let's open this up a little bit more. So this last bar right here, this is one day's worth of trading closed. This got a dash on the left side of the bar and a dash on the right side. We always want to concentrate on the, the dash on the right side because that's where the market closed for the day. Closing price is very important. Looks like it closed right on the 50 day moving average right here. So that's good news. Didn't finish below the 50 day. So once again, news driven market next week, it all depends on depends on President Trump. So if everything's OK, I believe the market's going to start going back up. If things are bad, market will probably go back down, have to consolidate those losses. Let's, let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial. Same thing. Here's where we ended last week, below the 50-day this week. This whole group of bars right here popped above the 50-day, popped above the 20-day. That's good. Looks like the Dow finished above the 50-day. You can see the dash on the right side of this bar. So we finished above the 50 day. That's good. Like to see that same thing. News driven for next week. Consolidate here. Hopefully we get to move higher. Uh, let's take a look at the VIX, which is the volatility indicator for the markets. Moves inversely to the market movement. VIX had been trending down. Uh, Friday's movement market was down. So VIX popped up, popped up right to its 200 day moving average, this line right here. So it's being held down by the 200 day. But this is really reactionary to where the general market goes. So whichever way the market goes, the VIX goes in the other direction. So it's really dependent on how the market itself uh, go. So let's take a look at some stocks of note. We always like to take a look at some individual stocks. Most like usually we look at the the uh, Nasdaq stocks because that's where all the biggies are trading. Um, let's move this up here a little bit. OK, so let's take a look at take a look at Apple because we had mentioned Apple last week as a driver. At the end of last week, we got a little bump up and Apple ended right last week, right above the 
right at the 50-day moving average. And I said that if Apple can continue its move higher, it can help drag the rest of the market up. So the rest of this week here is we were, had the gap up on Monday, traded above the 50-day, above the 20-day, and then Friday we had the move down. So it's closing right around the 20-day, 50-day. They're right next to each other. So let's hope that the news is good next week and Apple leads this market higher. Let's take a look at Amazon. Look at the biggies here. Amazon, same thing, had been down below the 50-day, had a good week, got up above the 50-day, trading around the 50-day, 20-day, and then, you know, the end of yesterday, we had the move down. So, you know, this is definitely event-driven, news-driven market sometimes. Um, that can happen, but it doesn't take away from the quality of the company and, and the earnings that it generates. So, you know, on a daily basis, the market could do anything it wants could be erratic, but you have to go with the long-term trajectory. I like We had the down move, and I like this little up move that we're starting to see, this kind of stair-stepping upwards. So let's see if that can continue for next week. Let's take a look at Google. We talked about Google last week, how it popped right off the 200-day moving average right here. Here's 200-day moving average. We had one, two, three, four. It looks like we had four days uh, for, the, for Google to try to push through. The bears were trying to push it through the 200-day, couldn't do it. Popped up this week, which was nice to see. Had a nice bounce off the 200-day moving average. That's what we like to see. And then, of course, this day Friday ended on a little bit of a down note. But that's what we've been talking about, news-driven market. Uh, what else we got? We got uh, Microsoft. It's another big one. Um, it's consolidating. Not as big moves as the other stocks. So Microsoft's still kind of hanging around. It's okay. Um Facebook, we look at sometimes. Facebook, same thing, had been down below the 50 day last week, had a good move up this week, um, ended Friday below the 50 day. So, Facebook is in that fang group, those big tech name stocks. And what else? The stay at home stocks. We got Peloton. You know, people like to look at Peloton, that's the bike maker, indoor at home bike uh, exercise. Look at this look at this strong chart for Peloton. So that's been going up all week, all last couple of weeks, basically since the coronavirus. Look at this. Hasn't hasn't stopped yet. So that thing still looks like it, it's gonna keep up there. Zoom, which many of us use uh, to do web conferencing and all that. Zoom still going strong okay so it's hanging up here probably needs to have a little breather here wait for these moving averages to catch up a little bit but i think that if it does happen to come back down to at least the 20 day or close to it that's good probably a good bounce you can probably get that on a bounce and it'll keep moving up so we got these stocks that are still making moves which is good let's go back to the spy so we can take a look uh, one more time see what's happening for next week like I said, um, it had a nice move from last week's low. Here's the range right here, small range. Got above the 50-day, got above the 20-day. So it will depend on how President Trump comes out of this coronavirus. If the news is good come Monday morning, probably see the ticking back up. So we like to see that. Q3 earnings are, are going to start coming out in the middle of October. So we have that to look forward to. Hopefully um, during the summer, some of these companies got back on track and uh, market will tally back up, move back up. All right, so that's it for the market. That's it for our assessment for next week. Keep an eye on the news. And let's move on to our options information for today. We are going to talk about Tesla. People love Tesla, love trading Tesla, but I wanna show you how we traded Tesla in our vertical spread trader newsletter. We sell put option credit spreads in, in our newsletter. We are able to take advantage of these high price stocks we sell put option credit spreads. That means we sell a put option at one strike and then we buy another put option at a lower strike price. Gives us a limited risk, limited reward type of trade. Now we're gonna take a look at our cheat sheet here. Always look at a cheat sheet. Talking about Tesla, when you sell put option credit spreads, you're taking a neutral to, to bullish directional assessment, but you're, you don't always have to be right on your direction. That's the great thing about selling spreads is that you can be completely wrong on your directional assessment and still win on the trade. That's what we like to do. So we sell put option credit spreads when we're either neutral to bullish on a stock and that gives us a lot of cushion for error and it allows us to take in a credit, make some money on the trade. So what did we do? So 
on September 9th, we initiated this trade. Tesla was trading for about $350 a share. Let's go back to the charts and take a look at it before I show you the rest of the trade. Tesla on September 9th, which is, let's open this up a little bit more. So September 8th is this bar right here that's, that's coming down on the 50-day moving average of this bar right here. So the next day, September 9th, we got in the trade because we were looking for a bounce. We were thinking the market was going to go back higher. So on September 9th, we entered our put option credit spread. Let's take a look. Go back to the cheat sheet. September 9th, we sold the October 16th, 2020, 230 puts. We sold the 230 puts and we bought the 228 puts. Same expiration date. And we took that took in a credit of 26 cents per spread. That means we sold the 230 puts and then we bought the 228 puts against it, created a $2 wide spread and we collected 26 cents per spread. That means the money was deposited instantly into our account. For every spread you sell, you collected $26. You sell 10 of those, you get 260 bucks. Depends on how many you want to sell. Then on September 21st, we ended up buying back the spread for nine cents. That's what you can do. When you sell options, you sell it first and then you can always buy it back to lock in your gains. Just like if you sell stocks, you can sell a stock, you can buy it back. You can do the same thing with options. What we did was we actually sold the spread first and then we bought the spread back on September 21st, 12 days later. We bought it back for nine cents. That locked in a 17 cent per spread profit. That's 17 actual dollars per spread. Sold it for 26, bought it back at nine. That's what we do. So let's take a look at the chart, see what happened on September 21st when we bought it back. So here we are, September 9th, bought, sold the spread right here. That means we were bullish to neutral. And then on September 21st, which is right here, this bar right here is when we got out of the trade. So it's like kind of, it, it's sort of uh, when you sell a put spread, it's a bullish trade. So you're kind of buying on the low and then you're not selling, you're, you're selling the spread here and then you're buying the spread back here. We're just doing it in reverse. So on September 21st is when we got out of the spread, meaning we bought the spread back on the highs here. And it was a good thing we got out because then Tesla's ticked back down. But you can see how it bounced once again off the 50 day moving average. So we got in the spread here, got out of the spread there. Go back to our cheat sheet. September 9th, we sold it. And then on September September 21st, we bought it back, locked in 17 cents per spread profit. Now, in order to do these trades, when you sell put options or put option spreads, you have a margin requirement. Your broker is going to have a margin requirement. That's just money that you need to keep aside while the trade is active. It's $174 that you, you have to keep aside while engaging in this trade. What does that mean? Well, to calculate the margin requirement, you take the width of the spread, which is $2 wide, and then you subtract the credit that was received, which was $0.26. Cents. So $2 minus $0.26 cents is $1.74. Multiply that by the 100 share multiplier because there's 100 shares of stock in each option contract. Comes out with 174 actual dollars that has to be held aside for each spread that was sold. Now, you want to know what's the return? How much money can you make doing spreads like this? Or what's the return? Now, to figure out your return, you are calculating the profit divided by the margin requirement. That's called your return on margin right here, ROM, return on margin. And just so we, we're a little bit more clear here, you're risking $174 to make $26. I know that's different. Most people think, well, don't you wanna, don't you wanna risk the lower amount, 26, to make 174? And no, that's not how it works when you sell options, when you sell deep out of the money options like we do, you're always gonna risk more than you take in. That's because the probability of making that profit is so high. In this case, we had a 90% probability of making a profit, it's very, very high. And, and, and you have to give up something for a high probability of profit, you have to give up something. And in that case, you're risking more than what you can make. But the probability of making that profit is so high. So in this case, we made $17 profit we divide that by the margin requirement, which is 174, and that turns out to be a 9.7% return on margin in just 12 days time. You annualize that, you get our fantastic return of 295%. Great trade we did on Tesla. Saw the market bouncing off the 50-day moving average, got in and got out up here. 
quick and easy, great trade. Our, our readers loved it. So let's take a look at the actual um, newsletter that we sent out. And uh, let's see. So on, this is what our vertical spread trader newsletter looks like. On September 9th, here's the newsletter that I sent out, new trade. And everyone can see that getting into Tesla, here's the trade that we executed. We sell, sell to open the Tesla October 16, 2020, 230, 228 put option credit spread for limit sell price of 25 cents per spread as an opening transaction. So you sell to open this spread. So in this case, we actually sold it for 26 cents per contract, which was good. And then on September 21st, we bought the spread back. Here's the results next day on September 22nd. This is what we ended up doing. We bought back the Tesla spread for nine cents per spread as a closing transaction. We bought the close. So this is the newsletter that that my readers have got. And so once again, uh, high probability of profit return on margin was nine point seven percent. How do we figure out that probability of profit? Well, let's take a look at our uh, options calculator, probability calculator. We have this on our website as well. Uh, well. Tesla was at $350 a share. We had 37 days um, until the expiration, but we were only in it for 12 days. And we wanted to know uh, what the probability of Tesla falling from 350 down to 230. That's where we would get in. That's where we would get in trouble if Tesla fell $130 in that short amount of time, which we didn't think would be possible. And here's what happens right here. 90%. This is this bottom right box tells us the probability of Tesla staying above $230. That's our short strike in the spread. So we have a probability of profit of 200. We have a probability of profit of 90%. So we like that trade. Turned out to be a great trade for us. All right. So that pretty much sums it up. We did a great credit spread on Tesla. Put option credit spread. It is a trade, a very safe trade that you can put on if you are neutral to bullish on a stock. So put option credit spreads on Tesla. That's what we talked about today. I hope you like this video. Uh, in the YouTube video that you're watching, down in the bottom right hand corner, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that red button, subscribe, and you'll never miss a video from me. Give me a thumbs up if you can. Give me a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Send me a question. You can always email me at lee at smartoptionseller.com or you can leave a comment down below, uh, below the video. And uh, once again, you can always go to our website. You can always go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. Get our free put option selling basics guide right here. Click on the link right here. Or you can go to our services tab. We talked about our vertical spread trader newsletter today. We also have our smart option seller newsletter and our one-on-one -on -one coaching if you need any help with that. All right, so that'll do it for me today. I uh, hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. I'll see you back here next Saturday. This is Lee Lowell signing off.